Toggle features on and off with ease by enabling feature flags in your .NET application. In the app settings.json file, we've added this feature management config. We've added some feature flags. So for a feature flag called new design, we've enabled that. For the show offer, we're disabling it. And for the discount banner, we're only going to be showing it to 20% of our users using the percentage filter, which comes as part of the feature flag package. So our ASP.NET Core application can read our feature flags. We need to add a NuGet package. So we go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and Manage Packages for Solution. We do a search for feature management, and the one we want is Microsoft.FeatureManagement.ASP.NET Core. We'll install that into our project. We then need to add it to program.cs. So we need to import the Microsoft.FeatureManagement namespace. And to add it, we call Builder.Services add feature management. With feature management added to our ASP.NET Core application, we can start to use it. First, we'll have a look at using it in a web API controller by injecting it through dependency injection. We're going to create a new web API controller. So we right click on controllers and add a new controller. We select API, API controller empty. We're going to call it feature controller. Now we're going to create a read only field for the I feature manager. That's what we'll be storing as the instance from dependency injection. We'll be doing that in the constructor. We're then going to create the constructor. So we pass in the instance of the feature manager and we store that instance as part of the private read only field that we just created. Then we're going to set up an endpoint to demonstrate it. It's going to be a HTTP get type and it's going to return a type of task of I action result. And we're going to call it features. We're going to return a 200 OK response. And as part of the response, we're going to output the feature flags. So we've got one called new design. And to get the feature flag, whether it's enabled or disabled, we call the feature management instance. We call is enabled async. And then we pass in the feature name. So if we go back into the app settings.json, we've got the new design, the show offer, and the discount banner. So that's what we're going to be putting in there. Start off with the new design, and then we'll do the same for the show offer. And finally, we'll do the same for the discount banner. Let's run the endpoint. So as part of the response, the new design is set to true and the show offer is set to false and the discount banner is set to true. So that must mean we're part of the 20% of users that can see the discount banner. If we re-execute it, it's now disabled the discount banner. Percentage is one of the filters included in the feature management package. But did you know you can write your own custom filter? To add a new filter, we add a new class. Now we're going to implement a time of day filter. So that's what we're going to call it. We need to mark it with a filter alias attribute. And we need to give it a name, an alias of time of day. We also need to implement the I feature filter interface. We go into the definition for that. We need to implement the evaluate async method, passing in that context. So we'll mark it as public and then we'll pass that method in and write our implementation. So for this, we're going to return a task from result. And we're going to say if the date time UTC now, Time of day is bigger or equal to the context.parameters get value, which we're expecting a time span for. And the key is value. We're going to be setting that in the app settings.json. We're now going to add it to our app settings.json. So we'll copy and paste the discount banner and make some changes. We're going to call the feature flag timed banner. We're going to change the name to time of day and the value to 1730. For the time of day, that represents the filter alias. And for the parameters value, that represents this part here. Afterwards, we have to add that filter to the add feature management extension method. So we call add feature filter, and we pass in our filter name as the generic type. So we've called it time of day filter. So that's what we pass in. Let's now add it to our web API endpoint. So we'll copy and paste it from the discount banner. We'll call it timed banner. And we'll also pass in that name as the parameter. As the UTC time has gone 1730, the time banner is set to true. 
Let's make a change to the time. Let's set it to 2030 and see what happens. As the UTC time is before 2030, the time banner is now set to false, meaning that it's disabled. If you're using Web API or MVC controllers, you can use the feature gate attribute to enable an endpoint depending on whether a particular feature is switched on. To demonstrate that, we're going to add two new endpoints. So we'll mark it as HTTP GET and we'll put in a template for that. Then we're going to add the feature gate attribute and we'll put in our feature flag of new design. We'll create a public method of iActionResult. We'll call it show new design. And we're just going to return a 204 no content response. We're then going to do the same for our discount banner. We'll make a few changes. We'll change the feature gate name discount banner. We'll also change the endpoint for it. And we'll also change the method. So both of these return a 204 no content response. We have a look in the app settings.json. The new design is true, but the show offer is false. What's going to happen with the show offer? Let's find out. So with the show new design, it's returning a 204 response. We execute the show discount banner. That's throwing a 404 not found response. And the reason being is that the feature is not enabled. Want to change the configuration key in appsettings.json for your feature flags? Well, that's possible as well. We're going to change feature management to features. Now to configure that in our ASP.NET Core application, we find the add feature management extension method and we can add a parameter. The parameter that we need to add is builder.configuration.get section and then it's the name of our section in app settings, which is features. Running the application, the features are still showing, so that must mean that that change has been made successfully. MVC Views also has support for showing content depending on a particular feature flag. Let's take a look. To enable feature management in MVC Views, we need to add this tag helper, either in the underscore view imports file or in any views where we're using it. To use it, we use the feature tag helper. We pass in the name attribute, and that is the name of the feature flag. In this instance, if the discount banner is set to true, it will show this content. We can do the same, but we can also add a negate attribute. And if we set it to true, that means the content here will be shown if the discount banner is disabled. We could also do it with multiple feature flags. So in this instance, if either the new design or the discount banner is set to true, and we set that by the requirement of any, then this content will show. We can then change it to all, so meaning that the new design and the discount banner needs to be enabled for this content to be displayed on the screen. Feature flags could be used to restrict clients that are based in a particular country. Watch this video next, where I'll show you how to add geolocation to your .NET project so you can use the client's IP address to find out where they're located. And once you've learned how to do that, you could add a feature flag custom filter to enable a feature based on the user's country.